St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Brought to you by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. Brewers of Michelob, Budweiser, Budweiser Malt Liquor, and Bush. Bush does it like no other beer. Have a glass or visit our St. Louis brewery and we will prove it. And buy Sunoco and DX, the great gasolines from Sun Oil Company and your nearby Sunoco and DX dealers. St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Hello again, everybody, with Jack Buck. This is Jim Woods to welcome you back to Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as the Cardinals, driving on the slipping Pirates, go for their third in a row here on the banks of the Mon Monongahela. Bob Gibson takes the mound tonight. His record is 10 and 10. Lifetime against Pittsburgh, he has won 22 and he's lost 12. His pitching opponent will be the former American leaguer Bob Johnson, who has had a struggling 7-7 seven and seven year with the Pittsburgh club and in facing the Cardinals once in his lifetime, met defeat. He is 0-1. The umpires are out with the respective captains, Joe Torre of the Cardinals, Bill Mazeroski of the Pirates, and here's the lineups they're turning in. For St. Louis, Matty Alou leads off first base. Ted Sizemore, left field. Jose Cruz in center. Joe Torre will be at third. Ted Simmons catching. Joe Haig in right. Ted Kubiak stuck in base. Dal Maxville the shortstop. Bob Gibson is the pitcher. Pirates are a little altered around tonight. Murtaugh tries to get them out of their prolonged batting slump and Clemente is not playing. Dave Cash will lead off and he'll play at third base tonight. Vic Davalillo, the former Cardinal, goes into right field. Al Oliver in center. Willie Stargell in left. Milt May is the catcher. Bob Robertson, first base. Bill Mazeroski at second. Jack Hernandez is the shortstop. And the pitcher, right-hander Bob Johnson. The umpire in alignment finds Harry Wendelstad at home plate. Andy Olson will be at first base. Tom Gorman at second. And Chris Pelicutis will call the plays at third. And here come the Pirates. This ball game is about to start with Matty Alou at the plate against the right-hander Bob Johnson. The big guy fires, strike call, and he is a big guy. He's from our broadcast territory. He's from Aurora, Illinois, lives in Lamont, Illinois. He delivers, and Alou on a changeup hits a foul ball, which goes out of play for strike two. Cash is playing third base, chased over there, couldn't get it. Hernandez, the shortstop, was also over there. Mazeroski's playing second tonight with Bob Robertson at first. Stargell in left, Oliver in center, and Davalillo in right. Milton May giving the sign. Two strikes to count on Alou, who has seen a lot of off-speed pitches in this series. Here it comes. Off-speed pitch fouled back onto the screen, keeping it strike two. It'll be Alou, Sizemore, and Cruz. Here in the Cardinal first. I'm sure you're aware of the fact that the Cardinals have won both games of this series and are now within six of the Pirates trying to make it five. Here it comes. Matty swings and drills it foul into the seats. Look out. It's still strike two. The early starting time here of 7.05 on a Saturday night. A good crowd on hand and a sellout for tomorrow here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Cardinals won 3-2 to two the night before last and 2 to nothing last night. Johnson looks in, gets the sign. He's thrown nothing but strikes to Alou. Ball one is outside. And another off-speed pitch. Harry Wendell stepped the plate on bar. Olsen at first, Gorman at second base, and Pelicutis at third. The pitch, and it's low inside. That makes it two and two. Bob Gibson will be the Cardinal pitcher in this ballgame. 
Bob Johnson on the mound for the Pirates. His record is 7-7. Seven and seven. He fires. Fastball fouled back and out of play. And it's still 2-2. Two and two. Johnson has pitched one shutout. He has six complete games. An earned run average of 3.21. He's been tagged for 14 homers. More than anybody else on the Pirates staff. His 2-2 delivery to Matty Alou is on the way. Low for ball three. A low inside breaking ball on a full count of three and two. Be great if the Cardinals could get out in front again early to sort of give the Pirates the idea that it could happen again tonight. The pitch. Fastball. Low ball four. And the catcher, May, thought they had him struck out. He threw the ball down to third. And he and the plate umpire get into it. And the pitcher, Bob Johnson, comes down off the mound. A highly... Debatable ball four call puts a little on. And we're talking from a pirate player viewpoint. They thought the pitch had the strike zone at the knees. The batter is sized more with a Lou on base. That's the way the ball game starts. Sizemore hitting 267 has an eight game hitting streak going. The pitch to him is over but low ball one. Johnson was way out ahead of Elu. No balls, two strikes. Ended up losing him. And that gives Sizemore hitting room through the right side. Robertson is holding against the runner. A lead by Matty. A throw over there, and he's back. Milton May is doing the catching. He was a left-handed batter. The backup man for Sanguin. Alou with the lead. The pitch to Sizemore and a foul trying to go to right field. Off to the right it goes. One ball, one strike. The on-deck batter is Jose Cruz. Some of our left-handed hitters like Cruz and Haig are due to pop the ball. It's been a long time since we've seen the long ball off their bats. Maybe tonight will be the night. They're playing straight away in the Pirate outfield. The 1-1 pitch. Coming to Sizemore, and it's inside. It almost hit him. Ball two. Spun him out of there. Johnson is not a real control artist. Although his base on balls total is not very high, he's walked 40 now in 126 innings. Alou with the lead. There he goes, and a fly ball into the right field corner, chased by the right fielder, Dalavir Leo, makes a running catch. Throws to first, Alou gets back. Oh, he made a good play on that ball. With a right-handed batter up there, Sizemore. The ball was hit right down the right field line, about five feet off the line. And Davalillo on the run caught up with the ball and made the catch. Alou had to scramble to get back. And had Davalillo missed that ball, it would have been big, big trouble for Pittsburgh ball would have gone down into the corner. A run would have scored, and Sizemore probably would have ended up at third. But Davalillo made the catch. The hitter is Cruz with a runner at first and one out. A toss to first, the runner back. Sizemore got a bad break on his ball. It just hung up long enough for Davalillo to get there. Cruz has four home runs. The pitch. Low inside, ball one, and Johnson thought he had a strike again. He's uh, again at odds with the plate umpire, Wendelstead. Cruz average is 248. Alou at first, one out. Matty takes his lead. The pitch, swinging a foul, trying to go to left. That evens the count, one and one. Well, the Pirates have their big man back in the lineup tonight, Willie Stargell, who sat out last evening's encounter. They are not playing Clemente and Sanguian this evening. Cruz waiting. A throw to first, and Alou gets back. Johnson doesn't appear to have a real good motion toward first. Looks like they might be able to run on him. Alou leads away, not going. Cruz takes it outside. Ball two, two and one. 
Johnson is not missing by a very large margin. Two balls and a strike. Cardinals hit and run on this count with Sizemore at the plate. Alou is not going, and the pitch is a strike call. At the letters, outside edge, two and two. The on deck batter is Torrey. Gibson will be the Cardinal hurler tonight. Trying for his 11th win. Manny Alou leads the way. He's going. A swing and a pop fly into short left field. Down the line. Chased by Cash. And he dropped the ball. It's fair. And both runners are safe. He dropped the ball with his back to the plate. And it's a base hit. Alou is stopped. At second, he had no chance to go to third because the ball was smack in Cash's glove and then popped out. The left fielder Stargell couldn't get there in time to help him out. And Torrey is up with two men on base and one out. With a left-handed batter up there, Stargell was playing off the line somewhat. He couldn't get in quickly enough to make the catch. And it went off Cash's glove and it's a base hit. Now I lose at second. Cruz at first and Torrey the batter. He's leading the league again by one point over Glenn Beckert. Batting 355. They play him to pull. Johnson is set. His pitch. Steer right call at the knees. Torrey, 17 homers, 94 runs batted in. Pirate infield, a double play depth. Mazeroski trying to keep Alou close at second base. Wouldn't be surprising to see Matty run. The pitch. Sidearm, curve, low outside. One and one. We'll have another side armor going tomorrow. Bruce Keeson. Reggie Cleveland will work for the cards. Torrey up there with two men on base and one man out here in the first inning. Alou leads away. There's a ground ball, base hit into right field, and Alou will score. He rounds third, heads for the plate. There goes Cruz to third. He's safe, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. Corey slapped it through the right side, and the Cardinals have jumped out in front in this ball game. Alou scored. Cruz raced to third. Torrey gets his 95th run batted in of the year. The Cardinals lead one to nothing, and the batter is Ted Simmons. There goes a pitcher trotting down to the pirate bullpen. Bob Moose gets up and starts to throw. Ted Simmons can add to the lead. He's hitting 306. He has three home runs. The infield back with Cruz at third and Torrey at first. They lead off. The pitch to Simmons. A swing and a shot to right. That's a base hit. That makes it two to nothing and Torrey stops at second. An RBI single for Simmons. His 56th run batted in. The Cardinals and Gibson are out in front by two. Cruz scored. Three hits in a row by Cruz, Torrey, and Simmons. It's a two to nothing ball game, and the batter is Joe Hay. Boy, would we like to see Joe get a hold of one. He had really do. Joe's average is down to 209, 10 home runs, most of which he gathered very early in the season. And the truth about it is he got those home runs early before the pitchers were real sharp and started to get that off-speed stuff over to him. Oh, if he could rip one now. There are two men on with one man out. Torrey at second and Simmons at first. Bob Johnson of the Pirates is on the ropes. A look in by the big right-hander. The first pitch to Joe Haig. A change-up is low, ball one. And that helps Haig when the pitcher cannot get that slow stuff over. Ball one. Two to nothing, the Cardinals lead in the first. On a walk and three singles. Johnson ready to pitch to Haig. Here it is, and it's low for ball two. The on-deck hitter is Kubiak. Johnson looks in at the umpire again. Pauses out there on the mound. 
now steps on and looks in. The count is two balls, no strikes. They play Haig to pull the ball. Here it comes. A swing and a long one. Way back. Five nothing. Goodbye. A three run homer for Haig. Well, I tried to talk him into that one. And with a count of two balls and no strikes, Haig homers with two on and makes it a five run Cardinal first. You begin to worry me when you do things like that. You got EST or something, I believe. Might head for Vegas. <laughs> Here comes Danny Murtaugh out of the dugout. Haig with a count of two balls and no strikes. Drilled one, a line drive over the fence and right. Driving in Torrey, driving in Simmons. Giving Joe 11 home runs for the year. 37 runs batted in. And it's five to nothing here in the first. The only put out was on the fine play, but now Leo. Okay, you look back on that and think how many runs we might have in the bank. I'm delighted with the five, but uh, had not Davileo come on to make that circus robbery on the ball hit by Ted Sizemore, we might have six or seven in the bank. Danny Murtaugh made an awfully slow walk to the mound. Moose hasn't been warming up very long. But it may be that the smiling Irishman from Chester, Pennsylvania has seen enough of Big Bob Johnson on this evening, and that's what Harry Wendelstad has gone out to find out. We've got a long way to go in this ball game and against a tough pirate hitting ball club, but the Cardinals have Bob Gibson on the mound. And he's been staked to a five-run lead on four hits. And as I said, if the Cardinals can score early, the Pirates might get the idea that it could happen again. Well, they surely do have that idea right now. Murtaugh leaves the mound without making a pitching change. And Bob Moose continues to throw down in the bullpen. What's the story on Moose, Jim? He's out of their rotation, isn't he? He was away for two weeks of Marine duty, uh, as I understand it, Jack. And then he came back and he had one start and he was very ineffective in it. And I think uh, possibly Danny just has him down there to try to get him back in shape. And we full well know about all the military duty and how it's affected some of our men. Well, now we're going to have a pitching change, and we might have a little discussion here because Danny Murtaugh had left the mound and walked off the playing field, that is, beyond the foul lines. I was under the impression, Jim, that once a manager did that without making a pitching change, the pitcher had to work to an additional batter. That was my understanding, too, but... Uh... Looks like the umpires are going to allow this because Moose has got his jacket and he's headed on the long walk in here. So the Pirates are making a pitching change here in the first inning and they are bringing in the right-hander, Bob Moose. Moose has the same record as the gentleman whom he replaces on the mound. Johnson leaves with a mark of 7-7 seven and seven and Moose is the same. Well, this isn't going to help Johnson's earned run average, Jenny. He pitched a third of an inning. He allowed five runs, four hits. He struck out none, and he walked one. And Lou worked him for a walk. Sizemore lined to right. Cruz got the pop single that went off the glove, actually out of the glove, of the third baseman Cash out in short left field. Torrey singled home a run. Simmons singled home a run. And Haig hit a three-run homer, and the Cardinals lead five to nothing. And Moose comes into the ball game, and Kubiak will be at the plate against him. Murtaugh and Wendelstedt, the manager and the plate umpire, got into a discussion out there on the mound. And it started to get heated. Then the Pirates made the pitching change. Actually, the plate umpire here did not call for the pitcher out of the bullpen. Nor did it appear that Murtaugh called for the pitcher out of the bullpen, so I guess I must be mistaken about my interpretation of that rule. Just as when a manager makes two trips to the mound in one inning, the pitcher has to come out. If he visits the mound at any time and then leaves, I thought that the pitcher had to work to another batter, but I guess I'm wrong. How the Giants do today? They They're in the 10th inning. They're tied up 5-5 with McGraw going against uh, Don McMahon now. Don't know who started the game for New York. Bryan started for the Giants, but it's 5-5, last of the 10th. 
We we'll continue now with the right-hander Bob Moose on the mound and Ted Kubiak at the plate hitting 229 with four homers. He takes a ball inside. I'll bet that Johnson, the Pirates starter, will blame the umpire for part of his troubles because he didn't agree with about four or five calls. Kubiak swings, grounds it to the right of Robertson. Off his glove, he picks it up and he throws too late. And that'll be a base hit. The ball was hit to the right of Robertson. It went off his glove. He made one grab at the ball, but it had rolled away. And Kubiak is safely on with a hit. The Cardinals' fifth hit of the inning. The batter is Maxville. I don't know if last night when we were describing the game, the disappointment showed in my voice with regard to Maxville's accomplishments or lack of accomplishments. I should point out that Maxie, with that sore side, is playing with his chest all taped up. He injured his ribs in a belly flopper down at second base the other night. And he's just having a lot of trouble swinging the bat. There's a throw to first, and Kubiak gets back. So if I was a little harsh on Maxville, it was because primarily of our disappointment more than anything else. The pitch to Dow, and he takes it low for a ball. He's the eighth man to bat for the Cardinals in the inning. Robertson is holding against Kubiak. And the outfield plays Maxville around to the right. The runner is on with one man out. The pitch is made by Bob Moose. Maxville takes it low outside. Ball two. Cardinals trying to move within five. You remember they were 14 out at one time. Two balls, no strikes, the count to Maxville. He's hitting 220. The pitch to him. Swing and a foul, trying to go to right field. Two and one. Gibson kneeling in the on deck circle, and he must be feeling pretty good about the situation at the moment. He has a five run lead. been underway here for about 25 minutes and the Pirates haven't swung a bat yet. There's a throw to first and Kubiak got back. It was pretty close. Two balls and a strike to Maxville. The runner might be going here with one man out. The runner is not going and there's a foul out of play. Two and two. The ball down into right field. A walk to Alou. Sizemore lined out. Cruz. A scratch single. An RBI single by Torrey. An RBI single by Simmons. A three-run homer by Joe Haig. Five-nothing Cardinals. Two and two on Maxville. Moose is ready. Pitches. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a high delivery. For the second out of the inning. As far as for identification with Bob Gibson coming up, the ninth man to bat here in the Cardinal first. This is the Cardinals baseball network. Gibson with two home runs, five runs batted in, is batting 200. There's a wild throw to first base. Kubiak will go to second. That's all he can advance. The ball got stuck underneath the grandstand, and a throwing error is charged to the pitcher on the pickoff play. Kubiak moves to second as Moose threw badly to first base. These are the kind of signs that show up when teams are jittery plays they don't make. I'm not saying the Pirates are jittery, but some of the signs are there. Gibson could drive home a run now. The pitch swings and bounces it to short. It's cut off by Cash. He throws to first for the out. Gibson is out 5-3 to end the Cardinal first. Five runs, five hits, one error, one left. Gibson goes to the mound and the Cardinals lead 5-0. You did it. You did it. You want action? Sunoco's the call to action. The action of Sunoco 260. Highest octane gasoline at any station. There just isn't a station that can beat it. Sunoco. Sign of the action, gasoline, 
Sunoco makes it happen for your car. The custom blending pump blends 260 into Sunoco Premium, Middle Premium, even regular. Get 260 action. It'll mean real action for your car. Sunoco, Sunoco. first. Gibson has a record of 10 and 10. He has a career mark of 22 and 12 against Pittsburgh with no record against them this season. Their leadoff hitter will be Dave Cash. Davalio will follow and then Oliver. They have some left-handed batters in their lineup. Davalio, Oliver, Stargell, Milton May. Gibson's wind up and first pitch is high. Ball one. Cash batting 309, playing third base tonight. Next pitch. Low outside. Ball two. The outfield a bit to the right for the young pirate infielder. Gibson delivers and pumps one down the middle for a called strike one, two, and one. Two balls and a strike to Dave Cash. Into the windup, the Cardinal right-hander fires and a foul out of play. Back to the right, two and two. On our best wishes to the Cardinal Football Club. Into their new coach, Bob Howey, as he makes his debut tonight. Ball three to Cash, three and two. The pitch was high inside. There's a line drive into right field. Haig is right there. Comes in, has it. One out. The 3 2 pitch, and Gibson working with his usual rapidity. Brought it home. Cash fly to right. There's one out. The batter is Davalio. The former Cardinal, longtime American leaguer, Davalio, is batting 286 with one home run. Clever little hitter, this guy. Moves the ball around. They play him to pull. Frank Osiak coaching at third for Pittsburgh and Don Leppert at first. The pitch on the way. Davalillo takes it low for a ball. Simmons the catcher. An infield of Torrey, Maxville, Kubiak, and Alou. Ball outside, ball two. Gibson's been behind the first two hitters here. He came back and got cash. He's 2-0 two two on Davalio with Al Oliver in the on-deck circle. Stu right call, 2-1. Davalio taking all the way, and that's a problem of being behind by five. Gibson fires. Stu right 2-2, two, two and 2 Another called strike, two balls, two strikes. Outfield to the right. The pitch is made and a fly ball to center. Cruz is there. Two out. Bob Gibson, after being defeated the other evening, that was the Monday night game against the Dodgers, was really crushed. I mean he was crushed. He's a fellow who doesn't show his feelings much. But that defeat really hurt him. And when the Cardinals won these first two in Pittsburgh, he said, I better crank myself up a pretty good ball game, hadn't I? The pitch to Al Oliver. Inside ball one. Oliver usually hits Gibson quite well. We remember some game-winning blows that the Pirate outfielder has delivered against the Cardinal pitcher. He has power to left center field. Oliver batting 274 with six homers. Gibson has retired the first two. There's a fly ball to left. Each outfielder will handle a ball. Sizemore had trouble but made the catch. He didn't see that ball right away. Haig caught one. Cruz caught one. Sizemore caught one. At the end of one, the Cardinals lead five to nothing. Nice home push. Bush does it like no other beer. Hey, Barney, come here. Give me one of your ice cold beers. Not ice cold beer. Ice cold bush. Best thing that ever happened to a thirst. 
almost sells itself, you know. I just go along for the walk. You're quite a promoter, Barney. Oh, no. A promoter's a guy who will furnish the ocean if you'll buy the ships. Now, me, I render my thirsty fans a service. Right. With the best beer in the ballpark. I'm almost a public servant, you might say. I do say. I can't imagine a ball game without you, Barney. Without beer. Without Bush, you mean. There's as much difference as between lightning and a lightning bug. <laughs> Go get them, Tiger. You got a lot of thirsty people waiting for you. Tell the game good, Jim. I'll see you later. Ice cold Bush. Bush does it like no other beer. Barney the Bush Man. Say hi next time you see him. We go into the second inning. The Cardinals lead 5-0. Sent nine men to the plate in the first as they routed Bob Johnson and they're hitting against Bob Moose with Manny Alou leading off. Manny walked to start the first inning merry-go-round. Faces Moose for the first time. The pitch is made and it's a ball outside. Moose pitching for the Bucks. The division leading Pirates. Here's the pitch to Manny, and it's a strike called at the letters. He looks back at the umpire. It's one and one. It'll be a Lou Sizemore and Cruz here in the second. Next pitch, ground foul, rip pass first base down into the corner. That makes it one and two. Benson is coaching at third for the Cardinals with Ken Boyer at first. Pirates are playing Hernandez at short again tonight with Gene Alley limping a bit on a bad knee. Alou, two, just missed with that one. Two and two. Alou acted like he thought he was struck out. And the Pirates were ready to throw that ball around. Two and two the count. Giants won their ball game today. We'll tell you about it in a moment. The pitch. Now he's called out on strikes. Moose gets him. Moose gets his second strikeout. There was a slider that stayed on the inside corner as Alou pulled back. One out and the batter is Sizemore. You'd like to see the Cardinals mount another attack because you never have too many runs. Here's the pitch to Ted. Sizemore hits one. A diving try by the third baseman. He can't get it and Sizemore has another hit. Sizemore singles with one man out. That ball was in on him, and he got around on the ball. He's now hit safely in nine straight ball games. Batter is Jose Cruz. Cardinals came here with a four-game losing streak riding. Two against the Dodgers, two against the Braves. They could have won some of those games. Everybody on the ball club has agreed, but that's history. The pitch to Cruz. Swing and a miss. He was going for the long ball. Not just because he missed the last ball, Jack, but somehow Cash doesn't look comfortable at third base to me with his moves and everything. He's an outstanding young second baseman, but it's not that easy from, to move from position to position. A ball in the dirt to Cruz, blocked by Milton May, the catcher, and it's one and one. That ball was hit to his left. Talking about the base hit by Sizemore, past Cash, went off his glove. Throw to first, the runner back. Some infielders who can cover ground don't have that initial quickness that you need at certain positions. Another throw to first, and Sizemore is back again. Cruz singled his first time up on a ball that Cash couldn't handle. A pop flying to short left. Moose checks the runner. Fires to the plate. Cruz fouled it back and had his best cut. One ball, two strikes. Jose had a good rip at that one, but just couldn't handle it. One ball, two strikes. Five to nothing. The Cardinals lead here in the second. Gibson set the Pirates down in order in the first. Redbirds batting in the second. Sizemore at first. One out. Cruz at the plate. And Torrey up next. Throw to first. Nothing doing. Lead by the runner. 
The pitch, swing and a high fly ball to deep center field. Way back on the track, Oliver. Way back. He's got it. 410 feet away. Back to first, Sizemore. And he had to hustle to get back. That ball just kept going and going and going. And Oliver could have gone no further. He was back to the wall, all right. If Cruz pulls that ball even a little bit, a little more over toward the power alley instead of straight away, this score is 7 nothing in a hurry. He really hit that ball hard, but almost straight away into center field. Must have gone about 405 feet. The batter is Torrey, singled in a run his first time. Takes a strike call, a good fastball from Moose. Up and in, in the strike zone, strike one. Five to nothing here in the second for the Cardinals. Sizemore at first, two out. Torrey swings and fouls it back. And two quick strikes on Joe. Glenn Beckert and the Cubs play at Cincinnati tonight. Torrey started the day at 355, one point ahead of Beckert, who was 0 for 4 last night. Moose delivers with a runner going, and a fly ball base hit into right field. Sizemore around second, heads for third. Davalio comes up with the ball. They hold the runners at first and third. Torrey gets his second hit. A line single into the right field corner, and Davalio did another good job of outfielding. Sure does. He gets over in that corner pretty well. Vic, uh, been around a while, but he's still got the fine speed and a sense of where the ball is going to go. Sizemore, I think, when he left the bag, I think he was surprised when Benson threw the stop sign up at him. The relay was perfectly handled, however. And there was no chance for Sizemore to come home on that long single by Torrey. It's up to Simmons with two men out. The Cardinals with a chance to score against Bob Moose. Torrey is two for two. Simmons single his first time up. Drove in a run, and he could hurt the Pirates again. The pitch, swing and a bouncer to second. A big hop to Mazeroski. Throws close out. Mazeroski had to wait for a big hop, and then he got Simmons by about a step. And the Cardinals leave two. No runs, two hits. There were no errors and two men left. The Cardinals have left three. Pirates come to bat in their second. The Cardinals lead five to nothing. Ice cold bullets pushed on it like no other man. Hi, Barney. Hi, Jack. Give me a bush. Sit down for a while. Oh, can't stay long, Jack. Gotta push the bush. Those pretty girls out there make walking a pleasure. Better not let Mrs. Barney hear that. She's quite pretty herself. And that's odd, too, because she's got a sister who's really ugly. <laughs> a dog, huh? We used to figure she put her face up in curlers. Enough wrinkles to store a three-day rain. Every time she raised her eyebrows, pulled up her stockings. I'm sure it did. She told a policeman once, there's a man following me, and I'm afraid he's crazy. Cop took one look and said... Lady, he's got to be. Bet you're glad it didn't run in the family. Oh, my, yes. I don't know what I'd do if they were like this Bush here. Like Bush? Well, you know, every bottle the same. Joe Torrey has raised his batting average a couple of points to 357. Here in the Pirates' second, Willie Stargell leads off, and it's always nice to pitch to this big guy with the bases empty. Stargell hitting 304 with 39 home runs. Strike called. Gibson drilled one across at the knees. Stargell has driven in 101 runs. There's a foul out of play, and that's strike two. Stargell didn't play last night. Steve Carlton handled him beautifully the other evening. And Stargell sat it out against Royce. Gibson fires, and it's up and in. Ball one. Bob set Pittsburgh down in order in the first. On three fly balls. He's working rapidly. Fire strike call. He let up and he got him. First strikeout for Gibson. The batter is Milton May. Gibson working with a five run lead. Has retired four in a row. May is a left-handed batter hitting 243. He has power. He's hit four home runs. He swings and misses, chased a bad ball up and in. I think his first major league run batted in was against Bob Gibson in a ball game last year. It's from Gary, Indiana. 
Swings and fouls it back. That's strike two. Fan made a good play on the ball. May is a six-footer, 175, a fine catching prospect. The pitch on the way to him, and a changeup, and he swings and strikes out, but he'll go to first as Simmons couldn't handle the ball in the dirt. The ball went back to the screen. It's a strikeout and a wild pitch. Gibson is credited with a second strikeout, but a wild pitch puts Milton May at first with one out. So Gibby gets a bad break there as Simmons was unable to prevent the ball from going back to the screen. Bob Roberts in the batter. He's hitting 268. Right-handed hitter. Takes a ball, gets away. The runner does not advance. And the way Simmons is struggling behind the plate, you suspect that Gibson has a good breaking ball. He goes out to talk with the pitcher. Robertson is the second leading home run hitter on the Pirate Ball Club. He's blasted 23. The outfield deep to the left for him. May at first, one out, the pitch. Swing and a foul, and he had a home run cut. It came back to the screen. Two strikeouts in the sunning for Gibson, but there's a runner at first with one out. The pitch, Robertson, swinging late, missed it, one and two. Gibson's fastball appears to be a good one. Robertson looked over into the Cardinal dugout for some reason. One ball, two strikes to count. The pitch struck him out with a good low breaking ball, and that's three strikeouts in a row for Gibson. Now the runner is at first with two out, and the batter is Mazeroski. Ever see a guy strike out four in one inning? <laughs> it could happen. Mazeroski playing second base tonight, hitting 262. First pitch to him. A fly ball behind first foul ball. A play for Alou. He's got it. Mazeroski fouled out. The Pirates do nothing in the second. They put a runner on and leave him on. No runs, no hits, no errors. A wild pitch. One left. At the end of two, the Cardinals five, Pittsburgh nothing. Sure is warm today. Yes, ma'am. That'll be ten cents toll, please. I got it here somewhere in my purse. Oh, my. The car stalled again. Come on, car. Not here, please. Uh, that's ten cents, ma'am, and you'll have to move your car. How can I move it when it won't listen to me? Now there's a solution to help prevent summer stalling. New STP Keep Cool Radiator Treatment. STP Keep Cool helps take the heat off your engine. Oh, Andy, it seems like only yesterday that Billy was just a baby. And now he's ready for his driver's test. Billy, sure you remember the rules? Sure, Mr. Granatelli. I drive to the service station for STP oil treatment. I'll tell the driving examiner that STP is especially important in hot summer driving because it protects and lubricates better than ordinary motor oil alone. Did you learn that in driver's education class? No, ma'am. By living next door to the Granatelli's. STP! We're going to the third inning here. The Cardinals lead 5-0, and here for the play-by-play of the ball game is Jim Woods. Thank you very much, Jack and Joe Haig, who struck the big blow in the first inning. For the Cardinals, looking at Moose's first pitch, it's over the outside corner for a call strike. 0-1. Haig popped his 11th home run of the year. His first in quite a while, but he picked a great spot for it, I'll tell you that. Off-speed pitch by Bob Moose, and it's a ball and a strike. Moose has not uh, been the big winner that they'd hoped he would be this year. Ball outside, two balls and a strike. He's pitched a no-hitter in the majors, threw it against the Mets three years ago at Shea Stadium. 2-1 pitch coming from Moose, and a swing by Haig and a miss strike two. Two and two to the count. Been seven hits in the ball game, and the Cardinals have all of them. As they ride.
wide, high, wide, and handsome here in game three, but a long ways to go. Ball two is just a little low. Scoreboard for ball three, rather. Three and two. Not on and up. Kubiak will be next, and then Maxville. Payoff pitch from Bob Moose. Swung on and missed strike three. Moose gets his third strikeout. Puts one away and brings up Kubiak. Jim, looking at this game from a pirate viewpoint, it might be valuable for them to be able to bring a fellow like Bob Moose through in this game, although he has given up three hits in the time that he has worked, but for him to get back into the pitching rotation almost seems to be a must for Pittsburgh. I would think perhaps if he would work around. Here's Kubiak waiting for the first pitch. Then the high fly ball out toward rather deep right, but Davalio's on the move, and he gets to it, and he has it for the out. I think maybe he might replace Johnson in the pitching rotation because Johnson has got to be a disappointment. They gave up a lot to get him from the Kansas City Club. Gave up Freddie Patek and a good catcher in Jerry May and a pretty fair hurler in Bruce Dow Kemp. And he's just not lived up to expectations. Two men out, here's Maxville. Maxie, strikeout victim, his first time up. Facing Moose. Sends the foul back out of play. Way, way into the upper deck. Cubs have gone out ahead of the Reds now, three to one. At the end of two and one half innings. Houston and Atlanta play later, Montreal and LA later. Maxville takes a ball down low. Phil's in San Diego, not scheduled tonight. Minnesota drubbed the Tigers today, nine to four. Oakland beat the Yankees one to nothing. The ball hit down to Mazeroski. The Golden Glove is up and on the first. That retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the third, and it's 5 0 St. Louis. Working like the Dickens at the mill all day. Wear a man out all right. I'll be beat when the quitting time whistle blows. But I'm gonna have some fun tonight. Good times don't come easy. Those times when a man can sit down with his fear and get back into things. Bush makes the best of times like these because the mellow flavor of Bush goes along with the good times without getting in the way. With a long day behind you and pleasure on your mind, Bush does it like no other beer. Visit our St. Louis brewery and we will prove it. Jackie Hernandez playing at shortstop tonight in place of the ailing Gene Alley leads it off here. He's at 212, three home runs, 13 batted in. Gibson moves a strike right by him. 0-1 the count. Mr. Gibson has the plate pretty well zeroed in as he usually does. Swing and a miss by Hernandez and 0-2. A ball outside, a moving pitch that was outside, a little low. One ball, two strikes. Pirates have had the one base runner on the strikeout wild pitch. And the delivery is ball two outside. Two and two the count. Frank Osiak, the coach at third. Don Leppard at first. The old Missourian, Bill Verdon, who is Murtaugh's uh, first lieutenant. Possibly the heir apparent if Danny steps down after this year because of health reasons. There's ball three. He's not made any appearance on the field during this entire series. Full count three and two. Gibson got ahead of Hernandez and now has got him out to the full count. Here's the payoff pitch. She walked him. For Gibson lost Hernandez. And Bob Moose will bat for himself. Not a great hitting pitcher, but he'll get a base hit every now and then. He's been up 33 times. He's had four hits. So Moose bats here in the number nine spot. Alou laying in behind Hernandez, and Moose fouls off the first pitch for a strike. 0-1. 
Cardinals with a five-run outburst, driving Bob Johnson out in the first inning. Lead 5-0. Moose, another foul straight back. 0-2 the count. Well, Gibby has another 0-2 count on his second hitter in a row. He works in a hurry, and Moose swings and misses strike three. That is Gibson's fourth strikeout. Puts one away, and the top of the order comes up now. Dave Cash. Flight out to Haig in his first effort. We won't be back until the 27th of August. The Cincinnati Reds will be there. We'll be playing the Reds, the Mets, and the Cubs in the homestand coming up. Fly ball, rather deep right field. Drifting back goes Haig. He's getting a beat on it, and he makes the catch. Two men out, and Hernandez returns to first, and we'll pause for station identification on the Cardinals Baseball Network. Big Devolio bats now. Fly ball to Cruz. What happened to him the first time up? Little Vic, who did the tremendous pinch hitting job for the Cardinals the year of 1970. Been a fine player for the Pirates. Big swing and a miss. 0-1. Came over here in the Matty Alou deal. He really chased a bad ball that time. It was way up and in. Fernandez, long lead. Davileo takes over low. Ball one. One and one the count. The end of three and a half. Cubs three. Reds one. Behind Pappas. Gibson ready to pitch. Jumped off the mound. Hernandez returns to first. And Davileo gets out of the batter's box in a hurry. Two men out here in the third inning. Pirates are still looking for their first hit. Foul out of play. One ball, two strikes. Big day here tomorrow. Ball day of Pirate father and son game. And a sellout crowd expected. There's a tap out to Maxwell. He's up with it. Goes on to second just in time for the force out of Hernandez to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left. The end of three innings. 5 nothing, St. Louis. I'm sitting here thinking, trying to decide. If I should go back to the town and the things I've left behind Those green fields are calling me, these office walls are boring me That's why I've got the urge to go You can spend so much time trying to get ahead that you forget where you really are Take time to get back to the good and natural things in life and do it with a cold bush. The good flavor of bush comes from the finest natural ingredients brewed the old world way. Nothing artificial added, nothing changed for a beer that does it like no other. Naturally. Bob Gibson just now striding out of the Cardinal dugout to come up and take his wax. Bounced out to third in his first effort. Facing Bob Moose, who is on in relief of Bob Johnson, who gave up all the Cardinal runs in the first inning. And Gibson takes the ball that is just outside. One ball, no strikes. Moose brings it in, took a little bit off of it, and Gibson didn't get it. One ball, one strike. Inside of the first inning, this ball game has moved right along. Usually does when Mr. Gibson goes about his business out there. Swing again. He didn't get it. One ball, two strikes. Bob's batting just under 200. Not been his most productive year with the bat. And he's had some good ones. He swings. A delayed swing and a delayed call on the part of Wendell Stanton. It's a strikeout. So that is four strikeouts for Moose. One out, top of the order up. Matty Alou walked and struck out.
Lou Brock's hand still causing him uh, quite a problem, and it's just a day-to-day -day thing when Lou is going to be back in left field and leading off. Moose throws a curve. It got a Lou right down the middle. No balls and a strike. Little bit low. One and one the count. Fine as this new stadium is, they have problems around there. They have bottlenecks. If they have a big crowd or even a small crowd. There's only two ways to get in and out of this place. And you should see the traffic piled up around here after a ball game. No longer a smoke problem in the city as there was many, many years ago, but uh, the Mellon family spent, I don't know how many millions of dollars to uh, do away with that. Moose delivers. Fly ball, center field. Back goes Oliver. In position, waiting, and has it. Two men out for the Cardinals in the fourth inning, and Sizemore, who's lined out and singled, is the batter. Ted's been doing a good job in left field filling in for Brock. He hasn't been the most uh, graceful outfielder going after one or two balls in out there, but he's gotten the job done. And that's what they pay off on. Fast strike for Moose, outside corner, knee high. 0-1 the count. Cash at deep third base, eight feet off the line. Here's Sizemore drilling one down to short. Hops up for Hernandez, the throw, that's it. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We move into the last half of the fourth inning. St. Louis five, Pirates nothing. Andy Granite, Kelly, it's three in the morning. You still writing commercials? It's tough going, Dolly. How can we change the STP approach for summer? Why should we? STP oil treatment still helps cars, engines run smoother, cooler, quieter, longer. And with all the extra summer driving, people really need the extra protection of STP. What are you writing? Just keep talking, Dolly. Keep talking. Leading off here in the last half of the fourth inning, Al Oliver stands in. He skied one out in mid-left field his first time up. And he'll see what he can do with Gibson. Pirates looking for their first hit. A strike call to the knees. 0-1 the count. In Atlanta, Cook goes for Houston. Pat Jarvis for the Atlanta Braves. Ball down low, one and one the count. Giants won in extra innings over the Mets, six to five. There's a ball bounced in behind Don Leopard at first base, foul. One ball, two strikes. Oliver, Stargell, and Milt May. Here's Gibson with rapidity working again. There's a little flipper out behind second base. Maxwell runs back. He's got it. Oliver hit that ball on the fifth, and I mean Gibson really sawed him off. Oh, one away. Here's Stargell. Took a call third strike. And he gets a big hand uh, every time he comes up. Willie is so well liked around this town. Ball down into the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Does a lot of work with children. Also has the chicken business here. Hails from the Compton, California area, where so many uh, fine athletes came from. Inside the Stargell. Two balls, no strikes. One man out here and Nobody on. The Redbirds in front, 5 nothing. trying to make it three in a row. There's ball three to Stargell. Gibson. Behind on the count, three and nothing. Fires in the next. Stargell went after it. He bangs it foul. He had the green light, five runs behind. Had the green light on a 3 nothing pitch. Murtaugh let him go. Hoping, I guess, he could pop one out of here and... Trying to get a little inspiration going on the part of the Pirates who have just not hit at all. Ball four, way up high. The second walk given up by Gibson. Puts the runner at first, brings up Milt May, who struck out but reached first base when what was ruled a wild pitch got past Simmons. Pirates have lost uh, 13 out of their last 16. 
Gibson getting adjusted and waiting for the young left-hand hitting catcher to get fixed at the plate. And he jammed him. No, foul tip, they say now. Strike. Pitch was way inside and just barely ticked the bat. And it's 0-1. The old Cardinal Nelly Bryles is up and throwing in the Pirate bullpen. Milt May takes the ball down low, 1-1. One and one. Had one run now in 21 innings since the Cardinals have been in town. High pop-up, left field. Sizemore goes drifting over toward left center, weaves around, got it. Sizemore likes to run to the spot. Gets a pretty good beat on the ball, runs to the spot, and then he looks for it. Two men out to Bob Robertson. Struck out his first time up. Stargell, the runner at first, two away, and Gibson and the Cardinals leading 5 nothing in the fourth. Fastball, strike call to the letters of the big muscle man from Mount Savage, Maryland. Talk about some of the strong men of the game. This guy ranks right up there with them. Check swing, a foul, strike, and it's 0-2. He did not get a cut that time. Bryles has warmed up a couple of times, but we're uh, hoping that they can get something started here and get down into the bottom end of their batting order where he'd be forced to hit for Moose. But Mr. Gibson is uh, not about to let that happen, it would seem. Two strikes on Robertson. And the pitch fouled back out of play. He had a cut that time. A one two. Gibson has given up two walks and the one runner reached on the wild pitch and that's all the Pirates have had so far tonight through the first three and two-thirds innings. Gibson brings it in wide of the mark. One and two the count. Bob Robertson pounds the plate. Gibson gets quickly ready. Sends it in and strikes Robinson out again. Robertson took a big healthy cut, got nothing, and Gibson has five strikeouts in the book. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. The end of four innings, Cardinals five, Pirates nothing. Heading for open spaces and places you've never seen. Bush goes there too. Travels to the best barley and hops wherever they're grown. Brings them back and brews them slowly into a full, mellow beer. Only the best for Bush, because Bush does it like no other beer. Fifth inning now. The Cardinals have out hit the Pirates seven to nothing and lead in the ball game five to nothing. With Jose Cruz leading off against Bob Moose, who has pitched scoreless baseball over three and two third innings. Moose has registered four strikeouts since relieving Bob Johnson. He's a hard-throwing right-hander, and he pitches to Cruz, who is singled and lined out very deep to center field. Left-handed batter in the first pitch. Strike called. He kept it away. Caught the corner. Strike one. The Cubs lead Cincinnati 3-1 to one in the bottom of the fifth at Cincinnati. Fly ball foul down to the left field corner by Cruz. Nice catch, mister. Philadelphia and San Diego have the day off because of a San Diego football game. Giants beat the Mets today, 6-5. to five. Houston and Atlanta later. Montreal and Los Angeles later. And that's the National League. With a count of 0-2, Cruz grounds one hard to second. Mazeroski has it. Throws him out. Cruz hustling all the way. Was out by a step. 
as he was retired by Mansaroski. One for seven, eight in a row retired by Bob Moose. Cardinals lead five nothing, and here's Joe Torrey who drove in the first run of the ball game. He has two singles, and he's batting 358, so he's picked up three points tonight. Leading the league again. Swings and misses a breaking ball. Got a base hit against Johnson. He's singled against Moose. The right-hander pitches. Misses. Low outside. One and one. Outfield playing Torrey to pull the ball. He leans back from ball two inside, two and one. Torrey is a fearless hitter at the plate. They move him off the plate. They hit him with pitches. They don't move him away. Two balls and a strike to count. And the pitch on the way. Low outside. Ball three, three and one. With Ted Simmons, the next batter. We're in the Cardinal fifth, and the Cardinals lead 5-0. We play the Pirates again tomorrow afternoon. Reggie Cleveland against Bruce Keeson. Torrey takes a strike, a breaking ball. The ball game here starts at 1.35 local time. Our dugout broadcast time tomorrow, St. Louis time, will be 12.20 and 12.30 for the ball game. If the Cardinals can win this one, they'll be going for the sweep. 3-2 pitch to Torrey. Swing and a foul. Rolling back into the Cardinal dugout. Cardinals scored five in the first. That's all the scoring in this game to this point. Bob Moose pitching to Joe Torrey. Swings and a base hit to left, and he's three for three. That ball was up and in, and Torrey ripped it into left field. He is three for three in the ball game tonight. And all three of his hits have been screamers. One a hard hit ground ball through the right side. The other a line drive single into right. This one he pulled into left. The batter is Simmons. Ted is one for two. Drove in a run with a first inning single and then against Bob Moose he grounded out. He's up there batting left-handed. The pitch. Swing and a line drive into left and the left fielder coming hard. Stargell, he fumbled the ball. Torrey rounds second and heads for third. Simmons going for second. They're both safe. It's a double. Stargell came hard in left field and he's a pretty good outfielder. He almost caught the ball at shoot top level. It popped out of his glove, rolled behind him, and Torrey scooted on to third, and Simmons went down to second base with his second hit of the night. The batter is Haig, and they might put him on. They'll walk Haig and load the bases. An intentional walk is being affected to Joe Haig. It's the first pass issued by Bob Moose. Cardinals with a chance to score their first runs off of this fellow will have the bases loaded one out and Ted Kubiak up there batting left-handed. Nothing doing in the Pirate bullpen. Haig hit a three-run homer in the first and then struck out in the third. There's ball four. Joe's three-run homer in the first inning made it five to nothing. It was his 11th home run of the year, giving him 37 runs batted in. Kubiak could help the Redbirds here. He got a base hit in the first. It was a wasted single, as it turned out, then hit the ball deep to right. So he's one for two. Pirates looking for the double play, and they have one of the great pivot men ever down at second base in the person of Mazeroski. Robertson is playing in at first, even with the bag. That's surprising. Swing and a smash past him down into the right field corner. One run scores, two runs score. Haig goes out of third base. They bring him around and now they hold him up. He tries to get back to third and he does and it's seven to nothing. Why 
Robertson was playing where he was playing, I do not know. He was playing even with the bag at first. And Kubiak doubled to his left, Robertson's left, down into the corner, driving in two, making it seven to nothing. Kubiak's second hit of the night. A two-run double. And the runners are on at second and third with one out, and Maxville is up. He's 0 for 2, and the infield is in. Robertson and the others are playing up, and there's a ball to Maxville, ball one. Now, Maxi doesn't have to extend himself to the point of swinging a bad ball because the pitcher is coming up next because the next batter is Gibson, and he can help himself. It's 7 to nothing, second and third, one out, and a ball a little bit high, ball two. They walked Haig, but they lost Kubiak. Nelson Bryles is warming up in the Pirate bullpen. Now they're going to walk Maxville and pitch to Gibson with the bases loaded. When the bases were loaded in Kubiak at the plate, the Pirates looking for the double play, they had Robertson, or he did it on his own, playing exactly parallel with the first base bag. He had no chance to get the ball. It was hit to his left. Had he been deeper, he might have flagged it down. And he's a right-handed thrower with a glove on that side. And things like that make a difference. Base and loaded one out. Gibson at the plate. The Cardinals leading 7 to nothing. Gibson is 0 for 2. Wants a fly ball if he can get it. Here is the pitch to Bob Gibson. Swing and a fly ball to right. That'll get a run home. Both runners tag up. Davalio makes the catch. Here comes Haig, and he scores. Maxville to second. He's safe. Everybody advanced on the fly ball by Gibson, making it 8 to nothing. And Maxville had to do that belly flopper again on those sore ribs out at second base. Gibson's sacrifice fly makes it 8 to nothing. His fly ball to right field. Now they're going to walk here, Lou. It'll be the third intentional walk of the inning. We'll load the bases again, and they'll pitch to Sizemore. Now Lou is being walked. The bases will be loaded with two men out. Now Lou is uh, cleaning his fingernails while Moose walks in. Just standing there. There's ball four. Sizemore up with the bases loaded. It's been a three-run inning, and the Cardinals lead eight to nothing. They have Kubiak out at third. Maxville down at second base. And Sizemore is up. He's one for three. Gibson and the Cardinals now have an eight-nothing lead. Sizemore could add to the lead. He's the ninth man to bat in the inning. Moose he goes into a full windup and delivers to Ted Sizemore, and it's high, ball one. Two-run double in this inning by Kubiak, a big blow. After base hits by Torian Simmons with one man out. Next pitch to Sizemore with the bases loaded, a fly ball to right. Should end the inning. Everybody running with two men out, Davali on to the ball. He has it, and the Cardinals score three. Sizemore flying to right. He's one for four. The Cardinals score three times on three hits. No errors. Three left. They have stranded six. We go into the bottom of the fifth inning. Gibby and the Cardinals lead eight to nothing. We go into the Pirate fifth inning. Nelson Bryles continues to throw in their bullpen for the pitcher is due to bat. Here in the fifth, the batter is Mazeroski. He is looking for his 2,000th Major League hit. He swings and misses. The first pitch was a strike call. This one's strike two. Now Bob Veal joins Bryles in the bullpen. There's a ground ball back to Gibson on one hop. Gibby flips it to Alou. One out. Pirates have no hits in the game. The batter is Jackie Hernandez, the right-handed hitting shortstop from Panama. He walked his first time, was left on. 
Pirates have had three base runners, two on walks, and the other on a missed third strike. Hernandez takes the ball way outside. The score is eight to nothing, Cardinals. Charlie Sands, a catcher, is on deck for Pittsburgh to pinch hit. Hernandez takes a strike to even the count at one and one. The Cardinals have made eight runs on ten hits. Strike call to Gibson fastball, and Hernandez took it. He's in the hole one and two. Bob started to work again, stopped. Pumps once more and fires, and it's low. Two balls, two strikes. Gibson slows it down a little bit, turns around, checks the outfield. They're around to the right for Hernandez. This fellow has some power. The pitch to him. High. All three. Here with one out, Gibson is in danger of walking Hernandez for the second time. The 3-2 pitch struck him out. A letter high fastball picks him up. Six strikeouts for Gibson. Two out in the inning, and the batter is Charlie Sands. Sands, a left-handed hitter. Used to belong to the Yankees. We saw him in spring training with the Pirates. He's a big guy at about 6-4. There are two men out. Base is empty. Sands batting for Moose. Here in the fifth. First pitch is swing and a miss, and he took a home run cut. Moose pitched four and two-thirds. He's charged with three runs and six hits. Next pitch to Sands, and it hits his bat and goes foul. That's strike two. He was ducking an inside pitch. Moose walked three men. They were all intentional walks. And while he was in there, had four strikeouts. Either Veal or Bryles will be their new pitcher. Sands takes the ball. Low inside, a breaking ball. And he had to do everything in his power to keep from swinging at that one. Sands is up there with two men out. The pitch to him, and a swing and a miss. The breaking ball got him. Gibson now has seven strikeouts and has not allowed a hit over the first five innings. And at the end of five, the Cardinals lead Pittsburgh eight to nothing. That's the call to action, and the place to answer it is Sunoco. Only Sunoco has the action of 260, highest octane gasoline at any station, anywhere. Sunoco! It's the call to action for your machine. If you're a man of action, make it happen. At the sign of the action, gasoline. Sunoco! Get next to Sunoco's custom blending pump and help get all the power out of your engine. Sunoco blends 260 into premium, middle premiums, even regular. That's 260 action, and you can't get it anywhere else. Sunoco! Sunoco! It's the call to action for your machine. If you're a man of action, make it happen. At the sign of the action, gasoline. Sunoco! Ground crew is out, smoothing out the base pass. We're going into the sixth inning. The Pirates will use a new hurler. It looks like Bob Veal is going to make the leisurely walk into the ball game. We're going to pause for identification here in just a moment. I want to check and make sure that it is Veal. Both he and Bryles were warming up down in the bullpen. Mr. Beal. We'll tell you about his pitching statistics when we come back. This is the Cardinals Baseball Network. A few 
Jim Woods, if I were to tell you that Beal is 6-0 and for the year, six wins, no losses, and you were to tell me his earned run average was... 7.26. You'd say that's not right. It's a, You're wrong. <laughs> it's a misprint on this thing. But Look at the innings pitch that he's had for six wins. He's pitched a total of 31 innings, and in that time he's given up 25 earned runs. He hasn't had... Uh, well, he's had two saves, too. He was talking He was talking the other day about this. He said, I know I haven't pitched well, but he said, you got to go with the record book. I'm 6-0. <laughs> <laughs> with a score 8 to nothing, Beal takes over here in the sixth. And Jose Cruz will be the first man up against him. Cruz is one for three. Delivered a key hit in the first when the Cardinals scored five times. They came back to get three more in the fifth. Cruz had been retired in the fifth inning, and Moose had set down eight in a row. Then things started to happen. The Cardinals scored three runs off of Moose after getting five off of Johnson. The pitch is on the way, and Cruz takes a strike from Big Bob Veal. And I mean this fellow is big. 6'6", 215. Pitches. Low for a ball. If Veal were a rent collector, you'd pay in advance. Big fellow brings it home, and a swing and a miss by Cruz makes it one ball, two strikes. Jose will be followed by Torrey, who will be up there looking for his fourth hit of the night. Veal pitches in the dirt, bounces back to the screen. Makes the count two and two. Don Clendenin roomed with Veal all the time. They were teammates over here, and uh, Don has told me there's just no way of telling how strong Veal is. He doesn't know himself, but he tears up phone books and things like that. <laughs> and he can throw the ball. His 2-2 delivery. Swing and a foul out of play. Veal confesses that he has difficulty regimenting himself with regard to his weight, and he knows that he has hurt his career. He said, I just can't make myself do it during the offseason. 2-2 pitch and a bouncer to second and a big hop to Mazeroski. The throw to first and Cruz is out. Cruz does get down that line. He's out and he's one for four. Here's Torrey trying to make it four for four. Jim Woods and Torrey have a little something going with regard to a superstition. <laughs> When we ride the bus to the ballpark, Torrey wants Jim to sit with him because he's had good success in the ball game whenever that's occurred and it happened tonight. The pitch to Joe. A ball outside. Ball one. Torrey is three for three. They're all singles. He has scored twice. He's driven in a run. And he swings and hits it slowly foul down the third baseline to even the count one and one. All right, Jim, you were seated elsewhere, and he said, get back here and sit with me. What? Started that night in the doubleheader in Montreal when he had the seven hits, and when he gets on a bus now, he looks <laughs> and see where I am. Makes me move. Swing and a foul. One ball, two strikes. Not that he's not a pleasant fellow to sit with anyway. One ball, two strikes to Torrey. One man out. Sixth inning, eight nothing Cardinals. A pitch from Veal, and it's a strike call. And Torrey says nothing, but I don't believe he thought much of the call. He's out on strikes. That's Veal's first strikeout. He's retired the first two, and Torrey is three for four. Here's Simmons, who turns around to bat right-handed. Ted is two for three tonight with two runs scored and a run batted in. Swing and a miss, and Beal can pump that ball. He kept that one away from Simmons. Cash at third, deep behind the bag. The pitch is made, and a fly ball into right center field, and that is another hit for Simmons. His third hit of the night. Ted is on with two men out. Simmons is three for four. 
Started the night at 3.06. He's up around 3.10 now. As we mentioned before, Lou Brock might be back in the Cardinal lineup tomorrow. A right-hander, Keeson, will be pitching against the Redbirds. Here's Haig hitting against Veal. Joe with a three-run homer in the first. Then he struck out and was given a walk. He strikes swinging. Breaking ball fooled him. The Pirates will have the top of their order up in the sixth inning. Haig missed again. Swinging hard. Strike two. On to the count. In the 0-2 pitch. Misses outside. Veal is the third pitcher. Bob Johnson started for the Pirates. Gave up five runs in one-third of an inning. And Bob Moose allowed three runs. Pitch to Hay. Low. We mentioned earlier this could prove to be a profitable night for the Pirates. Even if they lose. If they brought Bob Moose through. But he wasn't too impressive. 2-2 delivery, and Haig takes it way high, ball three. This Veal can hit a wild streak, the likes of which you've never seen. Paid attendance, 30,678. A full count of three and two on Haig, and the runner, Simmons, at first, will go with two men out. As the Cardinals try to add to their 8 nothing lead. Veal is ready. Simmons is running, and there's a ball drilled foul into the right field corner. The paid attendance tonight, 30,678. They had 31,000 last night, and they're going to be sold out tomorrow. They hold about 47 or so here, I believe. Ball four, Haig walks. For the three dates the Cardinals have played here, the Pirates have drawn 83,000. Now Kubiak turns around and bats right-handed and comes up with two on, two out. Ted delivered a two-run double in the fifth. Also had a hit in the first. He's two for three. Two on, two out. Deal in his first inning of work. Brings it home. Breaking ball in there and a called strike. I don't imagine Kubiak has ever faced Veal before. That's what they had in the press room tonight. Veal, <laughs> not Kubiak. A strike call of the knees. Strike two. On to the count. Two on, two out in the Cardinals' sixth inning. The pitch. High outside, way outside. One and two. Football, a first quarter score. Baltimore seven, Chicago Bears three. Here's the pitch to Kubiak. Swings and fouls it back. One and two. Cardinals scored five in the first, three in the fifth. Have two men on in the sixth. Veal slows it down. Makes a handkerchief out of his pocket to mop his brow. And then gets back on. Simmons at second. Haig at first. The three, the one-two delivery coming. Swinging a foul on a fastball. Trying to go to right. back up on the screen and then down to the field. Kubiak hanging in there looking for his third hit. Strike call. A fastball poured in at the knees and Veal gets his second strike out of the inning. The Cardinals leave two and they have stranded eight while scoring eight. No runs, one hit, no errors, a walk, two left. In the Pirates' sixth inning, the top of the order will come up. The Cardinals lead eight to nothing. Do, 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 do. Sit down, rest your mind. You've got a lot.
lots of time Call a friend, talk about the day you had Pull up a chair, keep your shoes off there Get your troubles, cause friend, it ain't that bad For the life you lead, friend, there ain't no need To haggle over nighttime entertainment You can sit at home when you're all alone And still have fun with the right arrangement That's the way Bush does it with the right arrangement. Six row barley and virgin hops, the best money can buy. Lots of time to let the inbrewed carbonation happen naturally. Rest your mind with a cold bush. Bush does it like no other beer. Visit our St. Louis brewery and we will prove it. Bush does it like no other In another baseball game, the Cubs hang on to their lead over Cincinnati, 3-1 to one, at the end of seven. And in football, the Cardinals in Houston scoreless after one period. Dave Cash leads off against Gibson, who has held the Pirates hitless through the first five innings. Ball one high from Bob, who has struck out seven. Walk two. Cardinals lead, eight to nothing. Next delivery, swing and a foul out of play. One and one. It'll be Cash, Davalio, and Oliver. A lot of left-handed batters for Gibson to work on tonight. Crowd whoops it up, and Cash swings and a fly ball to right. Haig is there. He's got it. Hard hit ball, but Haig had him played well, drifted back and made the catch, reaching above his head for the out. Now Leo is 0 for 2. I know sometimes when we talk about a pitcher having a no-hitter, people say we put the hex on him. Well, maybe in Salem, Massachusetts, but not in 1971. Now Leo is 0 for 2. Glide to center and bounce to short. The first pitch is made, and it is a ball high. And if something like that were to happen, we'd want you to share all of the excitement and be aware of the fact that such a game was in progress. The next pitch, and a fly ball to the shortstop. He got him on a changeup. A little pop fly to Maxville. You couldn't really call it a line drive. It was hit so softly, and that's the second out of the inning. Al Oliver is up. He's fly to left, pop to short. He usually hits the ball the opposite field. He's a left-handed batter. Gibson's first one to him, and it's a ball outside. Cardinals trying to move within five of Pittsburgh. Lead eight to nothing. Swing and a bouncer to first. Gibson comes over to cover. Alou makes the out himself. And at the end of six, Gibson still has not allowed a hit. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. You can start getting a little bit excited about this situation now. Gibson has never had a no-hitter. At the end of six, the Cardinals lead eight to nothing. I told Bush, Bush does it like no other beer. Hiya, Barney. Hi, Jack. Mind if I sit down? I'm getting to the age it takes me longer to rest than it does to get tired. Oh, you're not old, Barney. Well, now that I know my way around, I don't feel like going. Exciting night is just to turn up the electric blanket, I'll bet. Yeah, I'm still better than a ball player we had down home. So slow, he couldn't beat out a walk. Now that is slow. Took him an hour to make minute rise. And lazy? Nobody ever knew how tall he was. Never saw him completely standing up. I guess there are worse things than aging. Oh, aging can be a good thing, Jack. Like with this bush here. It's the extra time we take that smooths it out. I live like it is, Barney. That's just one of the things that makes bush the best beer in the ballpark. I better get moving. Got fans waiting in a hurry. So soon? You just got here. Yeah, but a man stretches his legs according to the length of his blanket. See you, Jack. Ice cold bush. Bush does it like no other beer. Barney the Bushman. Say hi next time you see him. We're into the seventh inning here. Maxville is the leadoff batter, and Veal slams a fastball past him for a strike. Maxie is 0 for 2 on the night. Big left-hander. Lays another one in, and it's a foul ball out of play. Two quick strikes. Two weeks from tonight, we'll be home with the Reds, and that's going to be Jerseyville, Illinois night. 
Hope you'll be there. Menard County, Illinois, day on Sunday in Vandalia, Illinois. Monday, August 30th, when the Mets come in. Pitch down low, one and two. You folks from Vandalia can secure your ticket information from Mr. Lamar Wiss at 283-2282, the phone number. Ball two is outside. Two and two. None on, none out, and the Cardinals comfortably in front. Eight to nothing in the seventh. Here's the pitch. It's wide. Ball three. Neal has been plagued with a lot of wildness during his career. Never was the great winner that they expected him to be off his minor league record. Another foul out of play. Full count, three and two. Outfield straight away from Maxville, and Veal readies now for the payoff pitch. Drilling shot out towards center. Here comes Oliver on the move. He got there. Maxville's bid for a base hit. Taken away from him by Al Oliver, and Bob Gibson will bat. Nothing for two. He's driven in one of the eight runs with a fly ball. The Pittsburgh fans are giving him a big hand as he comes up. <laughs> he bats against Veal for the first time tonight. Fastball right down the middle. 0-1. Robert Veal from Birmingham, Alabama. He overpowered Gibson with a fastball as he swung and missed two strikes. And the next delivery, he just did get a piece of it and nicked it back onto the screen. And it runs back down. Still, no balls, two strikes. One out here in the seventh. Veal into the motion. Here's the pitch to Gibby. And it's a ball. It didn't miss by much. One and two. Left-hander delivers again. And again, he's wide. Two balls, two strikes. Johnson on the hook for the ball game. He gave up the first five runs after retiring only one man in the first inning before Murtaugh removed him. Two-two pitch. Fly ball toward right. Davileo drifting two or three steps to his left, grabs it off, two outs. Two away now to Manny Alou. Alou is hitless on the night, although he's walked twice. And he's going to be taking his time about getting up there with Gibson having run down the first baseline on the high fly ball. It was obviously going to be caught. Gibby didn't uh, run all out. Final game of this series tomorrow. And then on to the Rhineland, the Riverfront Stadium. For three with the Reds, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights. Working Veal to Alou. Bouncing ball up the middle. Mazeroski goes over, short hops, and does not come up with it. It's an error charge to Bill Mazeroski. And Alou gets the line. That's the second pirate error of the night. And Sizemore has a chance. One for four. Maz got to the ball and couldn't handle the tricky in-between hops. He played every hop well except the last one. Fastball over for a strike. Going one. Houston and Atlanta are scoreless at the end of three in their night game down Atlanta way. Beal's next pitch, fastball low. He's relying almost entirely on his fastball, which is still pretty zingy. Although does not quite have the velocity as a young Bob Beal did several years ago. One ball, one strike, a pitch on the corner. One and two. Cardinals got him in bunches tonight. Five in the first and three in the fifth. And they've had 11 hits overall. Sizemore taps one down to Bob Robertson. He's up on all over to Veal. Safe. A good hustling slide by Sizemore. Just absolutely out hustled Veal to the bag. It's the only way you can call it. He went in there sliding. And that slide got him in ahead of Veal. And it'll be a base hit for Sizemore. And that is hustle all the way, my friends. 
on the play. Alou moved into second, and now Cruz will bat with two on and two out. Neal was extremely slow coming to cover. Cruz on the night, singled his first time up, has gone out the next three times, one for four. They're in the ninth inning at Cincinnati. Cubs three, Reds one. Well, the Cubs are hanging right on the coattails of the Cardinals, looking at this score and seeing they got a pretty good chance to pick up a full game on the Pirates, too. Curveball over, strike call. Alou leads off second, Sizemore off first. Real wicked fastball outside, one and one the count. This has been the only wide open game of uh, this series. The other two were real tight knit pitching battles. High to Cruz, two balls and a strike. And Gibson has just been magnificent so far. As he has a no hitter going to the seventh inning. If he gets through the seventh, the tension will be building up around here. And I'll tell you one reason why, or a lot of reasons, of course. People get excited about any no-hitter, whether it's pitched against them or for them. Little pop foul down out of play. There has never been a no-hit game pitched in the city of Pittsburgh in the old ballpark, Forbes Field, which was built in 1909. There was never a no-hitter thrown there. There's never been one thrown here. The close as anybody came was this year when Luke Walker took a no-hitter into the ninth inning against the Dodgers and the first man up Joe Ferguson hit a home run to run it for him two balls two strikes Veal works strike three called and Cruz is out of there no runs one hit one error two left and the Cardinals have stranded ten but nonetheless going to the bottom of the seventh they leave on the highway Tasted that rich tobacco flavor A big grin spread from jaw to jaw When you tried my Red Sox chewing tobacco I knew I'd made a friend out of the law Whether you're working, relaxing, or just making friendly conversation Red Fox chewing tobacco makes things go a little smoother So keep some handy, it's got flavor with life in it Make friends with Red Fox chewing tobacco So here we go, and looky who's up. Willie Stargell struck out and walked. Gibson has walked a pair in the ball game. Big swing by Stargell and a foul ball out of play. No balls and a strike. And this big crowd now is starting to roar. 30,000 plus in here. Gibson brings it in to Willie. It's high, a blazing fastball from Gibson. One and one the count. Outfield deep for Stargell, around toward right. Check swing, a drive down the left field line, it's foul. One and two. Milt May is next, and then Bob Robertson. Here's the pitch to Stargell, just off the corner. Two and two the count. Gibson ready quickly. Brings in the delivery. Strike three swinging. Stargell goes down on strikes. That's now eight for Gibson. And there's one away in the seventh. Milt May bats now. He's nothing for two. One of the three base runners that the Pirates have had all night. He struck out in the second inning, and the pitch got away from Simmons. It was eventually ruled a wild pitch. And the two walks, the only men that the Pirates have have aboard. 
Gibson pops a fastball just a little high. One ball, no strikes. Works again to the left-hand hitting catcher. There's a drilling shot. Deep left center field. Cruz on the move. Way back, way back. And he got there. Cruz at the wall. Saved it. Jose Cruz had to run a country mile, believe me, my friends. And he got there, ran out from under his cap, and staggered at the base of the wall and dragged it down. There are two men out. And here is Bob Robertson. Up twice, struck out twice. Gibson has eight Ks hung up in the book tonight. And he's had everything going for him. Robertson checks off the first pitch. He did everything but swing at it. One ball, no strikes. Probably out of the batter's box right now. I don't know what was the matter with him. Gibson doesn't wait very long for him. Brings it in. Strike call. And you can just see the smoke pouring off some of Gibson's deliveries. Two men out, seventh inning. Nobody on. 1-1 one, one count on the Buck first baseman. The delivery ripped down. He got a cut. Foul back into the screen. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Gibson again has to wait as Robertson tries to break his concentration and rhythm. Here's the delivery. A ball, breaking ball wide. Two balls, two strikes. Mazeroski on deck. Here's Gibson into the 2-2 movement and a swing and a miss. No, foul ball. The crowd roared, but the ball just did roll out of the glove of Ted Simmons and was just barely tipped. Still 2-2. Two two. Hmm. Get a little apprehensive when you get that close to getting it out. Here's the pitch outside. Full count now, 3-2. And again, Robertson backs away. He squeezes that bat. You can almost see the sawdust come running out of it. Three balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Bouncing ball, just foul past Torrey. Oh, man, that was less than a foot. Torrey lunged for it, couldn't get a glove on it. And it was just outside the line. Gibson has had two close calls in this inning. The long drive hit by May, and that one hit right there by Robertson. Three balls, two strikes. Big right-hander into the motion. Here's the delivery. A foul back and out of play. Oh, well, Robertson is giving him a battle. And staying alive here. And Gibson is trying to put him away. Into the dugout. 3-2 pitch comes in again. Let up delivery. He lost him. Ball four. Third walk given up by Gibby. And now the batter will be Bill Mazeroski. Who has popped up, grounded out, and we'll pause for station identification on the Cardinals Baseball Network. Man, the drilling line drive, and Max, he's got it. Maxwell. Right at his knees, took a scorching line drive off the bat of Bill Mazeroski, and Gibson is safely through the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of seven innings, the Cardinals eight runs on 12 hits, the Pirates no runs and no hits. Don't let a precious moment pass you by. Make every day count. Make every day count And when you see opportunity Look it in the eye Make every day count Make every day count When you see a friend in need Do everything you can And if your neighbor needs a friend Then give him a helping hand Make every day count Make every day count Make every day count in beer, there's only one way to make it, and that's the way Bush does it, with the best ingredients and brewing skills. Visit our brewery and see why. Veal Fire 
Here's the first pitch in to Torrey, and it's down low. One ball, no strikes. Joe has three hits on the ninth, three for four, and it's wide. Two and over the count. Struck out his last time up, or rather was called out on strikes. He didn't think it was, but Wendell Stat did. Two-nothing pitch from the king size left-hander, and a rip by Torrey and a foul. Two and one. Excitement has kind of died down here with the Cardinals batting, but it'll build up when Gibson takes that no-hitter to the mound in the eighth inning. There's a ball high to Torrey. Up around the peak of the cap. Here's Veal ready to move the delivery in again, and a high pop-up. Coming back, let's see, Milt May got it right at the screen. I think he had a chance. Well, Torrey has a three for five night as he fouls out to Milt May. Ted Simmons bats now, and he's had a double and two singles in four trips to the plate. <laughs> One out here in the top of the eighth inning. Cardinals have out hit the Pirates 12 to nothing. There's a line drive by Simmons, and I do believe he's got another hit. He has. Simmons hangs out his fourth hit of the night. He's four for five. This could be a night that Mr. Simmons will long remember. One on, one out. And Joe Haig, one hit in two official trips to the plate. It left the ballpark to cap off the five-run first inning when the Cardinals clobbered Bob Johnson and drove him to an early shower. A ball outside, 1-0 the count. At Chicago, Cuellar for Baltimore. Bradley for the White Sox. Cuellar hadn't been going very good. Bouncing ball up the middle, center field. Simmons down to second, and he's going to stop right there. As Joe Haig gets his second hit of the night, and the Cardinals' 14th baseball off Pirate pitching. Kubiak, the batter now. He had a big hit back in the fifth inning. A double down into the right field corner that drove in a couple, and overall, he's two for four. Cardinals came to play when they arrived in Pittsburgh early Thursday morning. Fastball low from Veal. One ball, no strikes. Simmons at second. Haig at first. Only one man out. And the Redbirds in front. 8-0, eight 8th eight inning. Big cut by Kubiak, and he tried to go down that right field corner again, I'll tell you. One and one the cut. Beal brings in his next pitch. It's nowhere near the plate. Two balls and a strike. Johnson, Moose, and Veal have been the three hurlers tonight for Danny Murtaugh. Veal again has his handkerchief out. He has a lot of trouble with his eyeglasses that fog up on him, and I can understand why, as smoggy as it is around here tonight. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Foul back out of play. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Two on. And the Cardinals trying to get some more. Trying to get even with their frustrations against the Pirates last year and in the early part of this season. Wide. Ball three. Full count. Three and two. Kubiak takes a look at Benson under the 3-2 count. Not much Vern can help him with. We'll see if uh, Red starts the runners here. He doesn't, and the 3-2 pitch is high. He walked him, and the Cardinals have the bases full. And Maxey will bat. He's hitless on the night. He's 0 for 3. Hit the ball hard last time up, but Oliver made a fine running catch to deprive him of a base hit. Simmons on at third, Haig the runner at second, and now Kubiak is at first with one out. And the Bucks keep their infield at double play depth. They are down by eight at this late stage of the ball game. Up high to Maxville, one ball, no strikes. Neal, who has a tendency to go wild, may be headed that direction. Big guy brings it down again. Ball two is up high. Two balls, no strikes. 
And it is Neil forever. There's nobody warming up in the Pirate bullpen. You know, you really don't like to see Gibson on the bench this long, Jim. That's right. Not with the rhythm that he's got going for him. There's ball three outside. Three and all the count. And Neil is on the verge of walking in another Cardinal run. And this crowd is hooting and hollering. Even though they got a first place ball club here, they're really letting them have it in this slump. 3-0 pitch, strike call, 3-1. Three runners lead away for the Cardinals. Veal gets ready in a hurry. Fires it high ball, four, and a run is forced in. That makes it nine to nothing. Max Noel will receive credit for a run batted in, and Veal's ERA may be creeping up a little higher. Base is still loaded to Bob Gibson. Listen to the hand for him. Nothing for three. He drove in a run with the fly ball as the opportunity to do the same here. And Veal is nowhere near the plate. He's gone wild, wild. One ball, no strikes. Cardinal runners at every base. Robertson up a little bit at first. A strike poured right down the middle. One and one. Now Bryles does come up in the parent bullpen. A 1-1 pitch from Big Bob. A throw down to first and back in plenty of time is Maxwell. Pitch with the ball. Two and one the count. Veal is only one batter away from the top of the batting order. Matty Alou. Nine nothing. St. Louis. Veal wiping his glasses once more. He's a white handkerchief now. He used to always carry a big red bandana out there. It was a trademark of his for a number of years. Two balls, one strike. Working to Gibson. Swing by Bob and a miss. 2-2 two -two the count. Came right over the top with a fastball. Delivery is a shot to left field, a base hit. Haig is in the score. Here comes Kubiak, and Stargell's throw is not in time. He scores. It's 11 0. Bob Gibson drives in his second and third runs of the night. He's got eight overall. And the Cardinals now have an 11 0 lead. Maxville stops at second. Still only one man out, and Alou will be the batter. I guess Sun would. See Gibson not run the bases in this spot, Jim, but that's a little additional effort he's going to have to put out this evening. Bring a jacket down to him. Yeah, I'm like you. Uh, it's a long inning for Gibby not to be on that mound with the uh, fast as he likes to pitch in his rhythm, but we'll just have to see how it works out. Cardinals, 11 runs, 15 hits. Pirates, no runs, no hits. And they're taking a jacket down to Gibson. Five runs in the first inning. Three more in the fifth. Three more in the eighth. And the Cardinals are giving the Parrots a real old-fashioned thrashing. Pitch to Alou. Wide and low. One ball, no strikes. Sizemore will be next. Still only one man out in the inning. Matty, a foul over the screen. One and one. Tomorrow afternoon, Bruce Keeson and Reggie Cleveland in the windup of this big, big four-game set. And a packed house will be here. 1-1 one, one delivery. Swing by Alou. He got nothing. 1-2. and two. Most of the big crowd sticking around, and you know why with this thing that Gibson's got going. There's a pitch foul back out of play. Otherwise, with an 11-0 score, I think many of them would have departed homeward. They're going to stick around to see if this, perhaps, is the night that the city of Pittsburgh will see its first no-hitter in baseball history.
swing and a miss, strike three. Yark points out that in, in the olden days, they just count their baseball history here from Forbes Field. There was one pitched here by somebody in 1907, but they've never really counted that as modern-day baseball there. They date everything from Forbes Field, which was built in 1909. Sizemore bats here with two outs and two on. Fouls off the first pitch for a strike. On one, the count. Eleven to nothing. Redbirds top of the eighth inning. Veal trying to put Sizemore away, and he almost threw that pitch away. One ball, one strike. At the end of four innings, Atlanta holds a one nothing lead over Houston. Giants lost today, or won today, six to five. And the Dodgers are playing tonight with the pressure on them. Veal works and Sizemore bangs it right down to Cash, who steps on third for the force out of Maxville to retire the side. Three more runs on three hits, no errors, two more left. Cardinals have left 12 on, but going to the bottom of the eighth, they lead 11 to nothing. The grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. Take a good look before you change anything, especially your beer. Bush is brewed with all the time it takes to let the fine ingredients mellow, and we wait even longer while our beer builds its own natural bubbles. Worth the extra time? Well, beer drinkers all over will tell you. Hang on tight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Here we go. Last half of the eighth inning. Jackie Hernandez to lead it off. He has walked and struck out. Torrey will play him up tight at third. The outfield is shallow, and Gibson is into the motion. Here's the delivery. Swung on. A ground ball down to Alou. He runs to the bag. One out in the eighth. And they're applauding Gibson on every out now. The batter... Is going to be Kleins. He'll pinch hit for Bob Veal. Gene Kleins, a right-hand hitter. Batting at 3.03. A home run. 18 batted in. And he's taking his time about getting up there. So this is the number nine hitter coming up. Kleins to bat for Veal. You know, that walk that Gibson issued in the seventh is going to ensure the fact that Stardew is going to come up again. Yeah, it sure is. You look back on it now, Jack. Torrey stays in tight. Kleins has got great speed and has displayed it in this series so far. Gibby ready to work. Kleins takes the ball. Down low, one ball, no strikes. Gibson has to wait for him. All these pirate hitters seem to be trying to break uh, Gibson's rhythm and concentration. Here's the delivery. A swing and a miss. Strike one. One and one the count. One out. Nobody on. Gibson has issued three walks. Here's the delivery. Moved outside. Ball two. Two and one. And the strikeout and the wild pitch that allowed Milt May to get on. That's been the only four. Pirate base runners tonight. Two balls and a strike. Pitch coming. Strike two call right down the middle. And the count goes to two and two. And again, Gene Klein steps out. Gibson just waits for him. Pumps immediately. Delivers. High ball three. Full count three and two. Gibson looks around behind him. Check the scoreboard. Check his outfield, which is a little bit around toward right. 
And a big 3-2 pitch coming up here to the pinch hitter, Klein. Here's the delivery, and it's a foul out of play. I think Brooks Lawrence is feeling the pressure over there a little bit, Jack. I tell you, his hands are just as sweaty as mine, Jim. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Gibson works. Got him. Strike three swinging. Number nine goes into the books for Gibson, and now he has two men out in the last half of the eighth inning. And the top of the batting order, Dave Cash. I fear this fellow as much as anybody in the pirate lineup, Jim. Three times tonight, he has gone to right field. And the last time, it was a line drive that Haig caught. Gibson works to him. Pops it through. Strike call. Low and one the count. Torrey has deepened about a step. He's still up on the AstroTurf. Here's the delivery. Ground ball. Hit down to Torrey. He leaps up high. Gets it. Throws in time. Gibson's got a no-hitter through eight. At the end of eight innings of play. 11 to nothing. St. Louis. You want action? Sunoco's the call to action. The action of Sunoco 260, highest octane gasoline at any station. There just isn't a station that can beat it. It's the call to action for your machine. If you're a man of action, make it happen. At the sign of the action, gasoline. Sunoco makes it happen for your car. The custom blending pump blends 260 into Sunoco Premium, middle premium, even regular. Get 260 action. It'll mean real action for your car. Sunoco! Sunoco! It's the call to action for your machine. If you're a man of action, make it happen. At the sign of the action, gasoline. Sunoco! In the football game in St. Louis at the half, the Cardinals 7, Houston 7. Here in the ninth inning, the Cardinals lead 11-0 and face Nelson Bryles in the top of the ninth. Bryles is the fourth pirate hurler. But the heck with the top of the ninth. Let's play the bottom of the ninth right now. I wonder if you can wave your outs. Bryles into the game with a record of 5-2, and two, an earn run average of 3.90. Cardinals scored five off of Johnson, the starter. Three off of Moose, three against Veal. And we'll send up Cruz to start the ninth inning. The Cardinals have outhit Pittsburgh 15 to nothing and lead 11 to nothing. And in the Pirate ninth, folks, Davileo, Oliver, and Stargell, three left-handed batters against Gibson, who will have a no-hitter going into that ninth inning. get the information that Nicholas Maddox pitched a no-hitter in 1907 in the ballpark the Pirates used before they were into Forbes Field. Jose Cruz leads off in the Cardinal ninth inning. And don't think, folks, that the plate umpire, who in this case is Harry Wendelstedt, is not anticipating the bottom of the ninth. The pitch on the way to Cruz, a swing and a high pop foul, coming back near the screen, on the screen, strike one to Cruz. Jose is one for five tonight. He got a base hit in the first inning off the glove of the third baseman, which turned out to be a key hit in the first when the Cardinals scored five. Torrey will be up next. Cruz takes a ball in the dirt. Torrey is three for five in the ball game tonight. And no matter what he does in the last at bat, his average will increase. 
Riles pitches, Cruz, a fly ball to center field. Oliver drifts back to make the catch. He's there, and he has it for the out. Cruz flying to center. The batter is Joe Torrey. Joe singled his first three times and struck out and fouled up. Outfield deep around to the left. Nelson Bryles in his first inning of work pitches and Torrey takes a ball outside. He goes back to the screen. Reggie Cleveland against Bruce Keeson tomorrow. The outfield deep to the left is Torrey Waits. Bryles brings it home and there's a ground ball to the left of the third baseman. Another hit for Torrey. Torrey is four for six on the night. Torrey gets a single with one out here. And the batter is Simmons, who already has four hits in the ballgame. Torrey now has 169 hits for the year. Simmons at the plate. Batting left-handed against Bryles. Swings and hits it back to the pitcher. Great play. Throws to second out. Throws to first out. A tremendous play by Bryles who grabbed that ball just off his left ear. Throw to the shortstop. On to first base. A 1-6-3 double play. No runs, one hit, no errors. And nobody left. And here we go, folks. Into the bottom of the ninth. With Bob Gibson owning a no-hitter. It will be Davalillo, Oliver, and Stargill. And the Cardinals lead 11 to nothing. Gibson has struck out nine. He has walked three. One other batter reached as a result of a drop third strike. Four base runners, therefore, allowed, and four more four men left on base. Gibson taking his warm-up tosses. Tavalillo's fly to center, bounced to short, and popped to short. Gibson got him on a, an off-speed breaking ball the last time. Last Cardinal no-hitter no was by Ray Washburn against San Francisco a couple of years ago. Oh, here's a dangerous hitter in this spot. Nick Davalillo, left-handed batter. For whom they play straight away. Torrey has to play in because Davalillo likes to bunt. Kubiak is deep at second. Gibson on the mound. The windup, his first pitch, and a swing and a pop foul out of play. Strike one. Well, Torrey has picked up four points tonight. He's batting 359. Next pitch to Davalillo, coming. Stewart called on the outside corner. Gibson really powdered one, and he's got some fire left. 0-2 to Davalillo. Leading off in the ninth. Gibson pitches. A ground ball to short. Maxville has it. The throw to first. He's out, and Gibson needs two more. Gibson needs two more. Oliver and Stargell. Now Leo is out 6-3 to start it. Gibson in the last couple of innings has been helped. When a couple of line drives were caught and some good fielding plays were made behind him. Al Oliver is 0 for 3. Left-handed hitter. First pitch. Inside. Ball one. Oliver flied to left. Popped to short. Grounded out to first. They play him to hit a little bit to left. Torrey is even with the bag at third, and here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. And a letter high fastball, and Gibson has this pirate crowd rooting for the no-hitter. What with the score, 11 to nothing. There's one out in the bottom of the ninth. 
One and one the count and the pitch from Gibson is on the way and a swing and a ground ball to second. He's got it. Kubiak throws him out. One more to go. Oliver was jammed with a pitch on the fist and he grounded to Kubiak for the second out. And here is the biggest power hitter in the National League at the plate, Willie Stargell, with two men out and the crowd is roaring. Gibson into the windup. The pitch, a swing and a miss, strike one. Gibson is two strikes away from a no-hitter. It'll be the first of a tremendously illustrious career. One strike on Stargell. The wind-up, the pitch, inside for a ball to even the count at one and one. As Gibson jammed him with a breaking ball, two men out, nobody on, bottom of the ninth, 11 to nothing Cardinals. One and one on Stargell. The pitch on the way, and a swing and a miss, strike two, a good low breaking ball. And Gibson is one strike away from the no-hitter. He takes off his cap, he mops his brow, he looks in and gets the sign. He starts to wind up, here's the pitch, and it's a strike called! A no-hitter for Gibson! Simmons roars to the mound, embraces Gibson, who's in golf by his teammates. As the Cardinals win the game, 11 to nothing. 25 players pound Bob Gibson for a tremendous effort here tonight. A call third strike to Willie Stargell ended it. And Gibson, who has done everything else in the book, except an no-hitter, got it here tonight. 11 to nothing, the Cardinals win it. He set them down in order. He got Davalio, he got Oliver, and he struck out Stargell, and little Butch Yachtkamen is out there pounding Gibson on the back. Butch had to jump up in the air to get to him, and jump up he did, and Gibson grabbed him. Everybody just all over him, and a tremendous thrill for everybody in the history of modern Pittsburgh baseball, the first no-hitter thrown in this town, and Jack said earlier, one in 1907, and Bob Gibson did it in just magnificent fashion tonight. If you were here, it would have made you cry. The Cardinals win 11 to nothing. We'll have the totals and highlights in a minute. Goodbye, woman, goodbye, girl. You've hurt me one too many times. You gave me nothing but a hard way to go. You brought no comfort to my mind. Goodbye, trouble, goodbye, pain. You give. I'll find myself a bunch of good, good times. I'll find a brand new way to live. Goodbye is not the end. It's a chance to move on up and find something better. A better life. A beer like Bush. Brewed with only the finest natural ingredients and over a century of Anheuser-Busch skill. When you're ready for the best that beer has to offer, Bush does it like no other beer. Visit our St. Louis brewery, and we will prove it. Before we uh, go into any wrap-up here, we're going to pause for station identification on the St. Louis Cardinals Baseball Network. I think that uh, Jack and this announcer have used up about every adjective we can think of tonight describing what was just a superb, unbeatable pitching performance by Bob Gibson. And a, and a heartwarming thing for this guy who all throughout his tremendous career, and that's what it has been, has never thrown one. He came close last year in San Diego. Ivan Morrell broke that one up in the eighth inning. But tonight... He was not to be denied, and he had 30,678 bug-eyed Pittsburghers rooting for him on every pitch. From the eighth inning on, every out recorded by the Cardinals was greeted with a wild roar from the crowd here, because they've always been pretty fair-minded here. Jack is already headed downstairs. There's going to be something to get Gibson out of what has got to be a mad scene down in our dressing room. Not only the no-hitter, but three straight now from the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cardinals closed to within five lengths of the Eastern Division leaders. The Redbirds picked up five runs in the first inning here tonight. 
highlighted on uh, Joe Haig's 11th home run of the year. Then they tacked on three more in the fifth on three base hits and three more in the eighth inning. Haig drove in three runs. Gibson himself, to top off his performance, drove in three runs. Torrey had a great night. He had four for six. Ted Simmons had four hits. And overall, it was a cardinal victory that just completely crushed the Pirates tonight. The only man to reach base off Gibson in the second inning. He struck out May on a very bad ball that got away from Simmons. It was ruled a wild pitch. He walked Hernandez in the third. He walked Stargell in the fourth. And in the seventh inning, he walked Bob Robertson. And those were the only men that the Pirates got on base all night long. Cardinals 11 runs, 16 hits, no errors. Pittsburgh, no runs, no hits, and two errors. The winner is Gibson, 11 and 10, and his first no-hitter ever. The loser is Bob Johnson, and he is 7 and 8. That's the closing stuff. We're going to get this down, uh, Jack. Where's the disclaimer, Al? So we're going to wrap things up here and see if we can get Mr. Gibson on. Some of the crowd still uh, sticking around here and just looking out at the field where this momentous thing occurred. Our producer tonight has been uh, Al Chance, our engineer, Bob Toller, and uh, John Toller, rather. <laughs> and uh, again, we repeat, Gibson in his first no-hitter ever. This uh, broadcast was authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the St. Louis National Baseball Club solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express consent of the St. Louis National Baseball Club Incorporated is prohibited. Tomorrow we'll be on the air at 12.20 with the dugout show and the ball game itself at 12.30 St. Louis time on radio and TV. Speaking for Jack Buck, this is Jim Woods bidding you good night. Gibson's no hitter. Cardinals win 11 0. Good night from the ballpark. St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Has been brought to you by Anheuser Busch Incorporated. Brewers of Michelob, Budweiser, Budweiser Malt Liquor, and Bush. Bush does it like no other beer. Have a glass or visit our St. Louis brewery and we will prove it. And by Sunoco and DX, the great gasoline from Sun Oil Company and your nearby Sunoco and DX dealers. This broadcast has been brought to you through the facilities of KMOX and Hughes Sports Network Incorporated. This is the Cardinals Baseball Network. The 201st win of Bob Gibson's illustrious career was a no-hitter here tonight. And Bob, what a thrilling moment. I know that uh, it had to be for you because I cried up in the booth. Yeah, it certainly was, Jack. Uh, uh, it, it really did seem like it was uh, that we had won the seventh game of the World Series. Uh, it was, uh, I really enjoyed it. And, it. and it almost seemed during your career, Bob, that uh, you've accomplished everything there is for a pitcher to accomplish, but you were never going to get one of these because you came so close a couple of times. Well, I honestly didn't believe that I ever would, uh, basically because I'm a high ball pitcher, and, and most hitters are, are high ball hitters. And uh, usually you make pitches up there, and, and if they don't hit it hard, they usually hit it over the infield or in the holes. And you had some tough hitters in that ninth inning. They're tough throughout the entire ball game, but... With the pressure on the line, and everybody knew that you had a no-hitter going from, uh, well, from the fourth inning on is when I first took note of it, and I kept talking about it on the broadcast. Well, I, uh, there's no doubt I was aware of it from the first inning on, and uh, after I got past the seventh inning, or at least when I got into the seventh inning, is when I, I really uh, started uh, pitching like I wanted to, to pitch a no-hitter. Joe Torrey said that you told him before the game you're going to throw one. Yeah, I did, but uh, we always say that. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob, the last game uh, I know I had to crush you, knowing you and the and the and the way you hate to lose, and you did lose that ball game. But what a way to bounce back! And not only you're no hitter, Bob, but that makes three in a row from the Pirates and moves us closer. And that's what it's all about. That's right. Uh, we uh, you always say that you got to take them one at a time. And, of course, we were looking forward to this four-game series here in Pittsburgh. And, and if we can possibly win that ball game tomorrow, 
Uh, I think we're on our way. Bob, you'll be... I was... I didn't want to see you get that hit the last time you were up and run the bases. Oh, I don't mind running the bases. Uh, I'm in pretty good shape, and I don't think that uh, it really takes that much out of you unless the weather is, is pretty hot and, say, you get two or three hits and you're running doubles and triples. But just for for a pitcher to run down the first or maybe stand on first and run the second or third, I don't think that's going to wear him out. Bob, any, uh, any particular ball off the bat that made your heart go pitty-patter? Well, the, uh, the only one that really did bother me was... Uh, a ball that was hit to cash uh, that bounced, and Torrey had to jump to get it. I thought it was going to bounce over his head. Had in the webbing of his glove. That's right. Uh, just uh, Torrey was in in case he bunted, and the ball just about got over his head. Someone hit a line drive at Maxville also. Yeah, Mazeroski, but it wasn't quite the way it, uh, it looked. Uh, it was a slider that was away, and he tried to pull it. Uh, when he hit it, I turned around and looked, and, and I could tell pretty well that it was going right to Maxi. The young catcher hit a ball deep to left center. The Cruz uh, stayed with all the way. Yeah, I wasn't worried about that at all. The ball was high enough. Uh, uh, I wasn't worried about a hit. The only thing I could possibly do was go out of the ballpark, uh, and I'm sure he didn't hit it that hard. The only thing you could do is go out of the ballpark. Well, that's right. I mean, as far as uh, if the ball comes down, I know it's high enough for him to catch. Bob, congratulations on the win. We want to, don't want to detain you any longer. And congratulations to get back on the winning track. And you just gave all of us a thrill in the ball club, a big lift along with it. And now in the record book, it'll say Robert Gibson on this night, August 14th, no hitter against the Pirates. Nice going. Thank you, Jack.